Hello, hello. I read a lot this week. Um, so last week, three books. This week, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Uh, unfortunately, three of them were not in the book world, but seven of them were, which is, you know, decent enough. Uh, so first up, the first book I finished was, of course, It by Stephen King. <laughs> um, this is a reread. I've read this book, honestly, I want to say like 12 to 15 times. This is, I think, one of the books I've read the most often. Um, and I have realized coming through it this this last time that this is might be like right now on my favorite book spreadsheet it's sitting at number one granted the two books that I do sometimes say are my favorite book uh The Long Walk and Lord of the Flies I have not read since I started my favorite book spreadsheet but yeah uh, if you are unaware somehow uh it is the story of this small town in Maine where every 28 years a murder clown comes and starts killing children uh and in 1958 this group of children who are kind of you know, constantly beaten down by society and their parents and their and pe peers and stuff like that. Um, they think that they kill him, but they didn't. And so then 28 years later, the one of them that stayed in the town calls them all up to try to kind of finish it this time. And I just, this book is about childhood and it's about how you can't, you can't really ever go back and nothing's going to be like how it was. And it's about the friends you make when you're that age. And it's so fucking metaphorical. And just every time the end of the book and the destruction at the end of the book just gets me it gets me so hard and it's just i love this book so much it's five out of five stars like for sure for sure and i just i get really emotional about it all the time uh, after that i read they oh jesus attacking me i read uh the strongest age with the weakest crest volume three this is one of those mangas where we got like our main character who's super powerful and it's very like gamey like very like ttrpg um and i'm not a huge fan of those <laughs> i think i think they're vaguely dull most of the time like and I, and I realize that there's definitely an audience for them i'm not that audience i will say i appreciated how our main character here he does have two female companions and i don't think i saw them either of them in a state of undress so that was nice uh i think the art style is pretty cute I think it's decent. Um, I don't know if I'm ever going to get into this series at all. I give it 3.5 out of 5 stars. If you like this kind of manga, this is probably a good one. I don't. Like this and the isekai stuff, I just get deeply bored by. Uh, but if it's your thing, maybe give it a shot. Like I said, no scantily clad young women. Uh, then Crash Landing by Francine Pascal. My god, like I remember when I first started reading these because I have a whole slew of them. Uh, because when I used to work at the library, we got a whole bunch of these donated, and the library director told me to throw them all away, and I was like, no, I can't do that, and I took them all home, and so now I have just a thousand of them in the book wall. <laughs> um, and this one, Elizabeth, her best friend, uh, go is going on a plane ride with her boyfriend, and her boyfriend, unbeknownst to her, wants to break up with her, but like, we're gonna go on this nice plane ride, we'll have one final nice day, but then the plane crashes, and now Enid's uh, paralyzed from the waist down. There's that. Uh, I cannot fucking stand Elizabeth. My God. <laughs> like, I remember when I first started reading these, I was like, Jessica is the actual worst. But you know what? You know what? Elizabeth is the actual worst because at least Jessica is, has a personality. You know? She might make some poor decisions, but she has a personality. Oh, this is terrible. Uh, it wasn't the worst one I read, but it's terrible. Three out of five stars. So bad. Like, ugh. Terrible. Hate. Hate. So much hate. After that, I read a classic. I read The Red Badge of Courage by Stephen Crane. Uh, this is about a young man who was fighting in World and no, it's the Civil War. He's fighting in the Civil War. And it is really about the horrors of war and how he feels like he, especially at the beginning, like he feels like he isn't doing his part. He's not really doing anything because he hasn't been injured. That's what the Red Badge of Courage is, is when you have like an injury when you've been shot. Um, and it is really good about showing you the disconnect and just the horrors of war, just the, the, the way that this book is written, just how everything is described is just horrible. It's horrifying. And our, our main character here, his name is Henry, but he's referred to like exclusively as the youth. That's it. Like, like we know his name is Henry because sometimes people talk to him and they call him Henry. Uh, but in the narration, he's the youth and it's, it's, it's sobering. It's a sobering novel. <laughs> Um, Stephen Crane, I read some of his short stories when I was in college. I never read any of his, I never didn't read this. Uh, I'm pretty sure if I'm thinking of the right guy, this is the guy that just kind of disappeared into Mexico. And then nobody ever saw him again. I give this 4.5 out of 5 stars. After that, so that book, I brought it, you know, 
to school. Uh, I always bring whatever book I'm currently reading to school and I read it when I have time, you know. Um, it's part of new modeling. Fifth graders see me reading also at this, my excuse mostly. Uh, I had 90 pages left but I thought I wouldn't finish it and I did and so I asked one of my fifth graders to pick me out a book from our classroom library that they thought I could finish in a day and that ended up being Invisible Emmy by Terry Libinson. So I have all of these books for a classroom library. Um, she's written like six or seven of them. They're just about these little mid these middle schoolers who have these issues. Um, and this was very, it was very cute. Honestly, I understand why these are so popular because they're very, very popular. Um, they're like kind of in that diary from Wicked Cell where we've got like a lot of illustrations, but we've got, you know, some good text too. Um, this is about this girl who she's very, very shy and she doesn't really know how to deal with with people and stuff like that. She's got her one friend, but other than that, she's like really, really shy and her friend is in all honors classes and so she doesn't really have any classes with her and one day she, her and her friend decide that we're gonna like have some fun and write love notes to the boys we have a crush on. However, Emmy's note gets found and it was a good time. It was good. Um, like I said, I understand why they were so popular and I do think that I would like to if I ever happen to, you know, finish my book again, um, I might pick up the other books that are in this series. I think I have a four out of five stars. I don't remember though, um, but there's that. After that, I've got two books that I read with groups of my fifth graders. The first one is All Rise for the Honorable Perry T. Cook. This has got a blurb by Gary D. Schmidt on the front and I'm like, I understand because this is a very Gary D. Schmidt kind of book. It's about this kid and he has grown up in a prison um, because his mother was pregnant with him when she was sentenced to prison. Um, and he is, you know, they, they, he, he's having, I mean, he's grown up there. He's comfortable that he knows it. Um, he does go out of the prison to go to school and stuff like that. But one day uh, somebody realizes that, oh shit, there's a 12 year old kid in this prison and they pull him and he obviously gets really upset by this but he's really trying to figure out like why exactly his mother is in prison what actually went on um he's trying his, his mother has is up for parole soon and the district attorney doesn't want her to get parole now because she had her kid there the whole it's like it's a whole thing and it's talking about like are prisons for rehabilitation or are they for punishment because that's what the district, district attorney is saying is that well she had her kid with her she wasn't really punished for what she did um it's like but she's really unlikely to reoffend. it's a whole whole thing um and it was a really good book, I'm not gonna lie. It was fantastic. Um, like I said, like this is a very Gary D. Schmidt kind of book. Uh, Gary D. Schmidt is I think one of the best children's middle grade authors that's writing right now. Okay for now is just wonderful. It's like literally one of the best books that I've ever read in my entire life. And this book, it was good. It was really good. Um, longer, but it doesn't take that long to get through. Um, I think, again, five stars I wanna say, maybe. Um, after that, in a different, for a different reading group, we finished up Midnight for Charlie Bone by Jenny Nimmo. Um, this is a magic school British thing. This is one of those series that I was reading when I was waiting for Harry Potter books to come out when I was, you know, like nine. Um, this is about this kid named Charlie Bone and he lives in this town where there's this very like arts academy called Bloor's Academy. But there's a group of students at this academy who don't aren't like artists. They like, they they don't sing, they don't they don't act, they don't they don't draw. But they, what they do have is powers and Charlie Bowen realizes one day that he can hear what people are saying in photographs. So he gets sent to this academy and there's a whole mystery about like a girl who disappeared and everything. It's a, it's a, this is a decent start to a series that I think does just get better the farther you go. Um, it's a good time. I think I get four out of five stars. I've read this book so many times. Like this is a childhood series for me um, and it was fun to reread it. After that, I read The Prince of Shadow by Kurt Benjamin. I think this was my worst book of the week. It was. Uh, it's a big, big old boy. Uh, this is a first book in a series. It's a fantasy series about this this kid. He's like 17. Fifth, no, he's 15. No, he's 16. I think he turned 17. In this book. I think he's like 15 to 17 in this book. Um, but he is a slave and he was when he was seven his he was a prince and him and all of his older brothers were captured and sold as slaves and the rest of his family was murdered and he has been a slave for you know, the past 10 years um and he ends up deciding like you know no i gotta i gotta go find my brothers now because his mentor dies and he's like okay i gotta go find my brothers so he ends up going and becoming a gladiator the thing with this book is like it's it's thick um and it feels like it's so much fucking happens like there's so many events but it dragged so hard like it was just it constantly like it felt like 
so much was happening but never in a way that was interesting um and the characters were just not there like they just weren't interested I liked Big Say but that's just I, I'm pretty sure I just liked Big Say because he was like a meme right when we met him I'm like that guy's fun um two out of five stars it was there are so many better fantasy series out there than this one and like this one is just not worth it um I got this in like a lot of books off of eBay I'm pretty sure and I'm ugh, two out of five stars all right after that I finished up Ruby by Cynthia Bond. This book is just full of trauma. My god. Uh, so this is a historical fiction um, and it follows these two these two children basically. Um, there's our kind of our main character is, is Ephraim Jennings and he um, when he was younger he was really really just enamored with this girl Ruby Bell who um, definitely had a very very hard life um, and so we talk about them a little bit when they're younger. We talk about them a little bit when they're older after Ruby has come back to their t to Liberty, their town. Um, but mostly we talk about just the horrific trauma that was visited upon both of them, most particularly Ruby. Um, and that's really what this is. Uh, this is just a lot of trauma. There's so much fucking sexual assault in this. Like, it is explicit. It is frequent and it is very, very hard to read at times. So, like, if you can't, are not in the headspace for that, like, don't pick up this book. Obviously, this stuff fucking happens. You know, there are people who are constant victims. Um, but if you can't handle it, like, don't pick up this book because it is there and it is harsh and it is constant. It's a very well written book. It's beautifully written. It's so well done. Uh, it's also so difficult to read um, at times. Um, and I literally everybody in this book was awful except for Ephraim. Ephraim was fantastic. He was a great guy. He was great. Ephraim was great. <laughs> everybody else though like oh my god um yeah I give it four out of five stars it's it's a good book uh but again if you cannot handle constant explicit and really harsh sexual assault don't read it uh four out of five stars uh and then finally I read one of my own books uh I read New Match this is my most recent release uh this follows this group of high schoolers this terrible group of, of, of high schoolers who one day decide that they're gonna get back at their English teacher by signing her up for like a Christian dating site and they're like catfish men uh but then the guy that they catfish ends up like not really liking that they're catfishing him and then he starts just killing them one by one um I had a lot of fun writing this one <laughs> I had a lot of fun with it uh it is it's a good time you know if you were interested in like a stupid little thrill like that this was really in my mind kind of inspired by the R.L. Stein Christopher Pike situations um kind of the cheesy teen horror situation and I I had fun with it. I had fun with it. This is the back if you want to pause and read the synopsis. Five out of five stars. It's my own book. I'm gonna give it five stars. Uh, currently I'm like what like 60 pages in? 59. I'm 59 pages into Lady Midnight. Hopefully I can finish this fairly quickly. It's got long goddamn chapters so that will help me finish it faster. Uh, but These are the books I read this past week. That is all I have for today. I will talk to you later and goodbye.